Hello, everybody. Welcome to Telly Talks, where we talk about life, relationships, and all things in between. I have world-class skier, entrepreneur, Andreas Pischler. In the building, thanks for coming. We are here at the Classic Cat, about to enjoy our amazing espresso martinis. Cheers. Thank you so much. Cheers. So well made. Mm. Thank you, Maria. Ah. So, for the people that don't know your journey, can you tell us how you got to where you are today? Hmm. How I started? I started being born in Austria. And um, as far as I can remember, I was starting skiing when I was two years old. Um, two. Yeah. So I think I started skiing before I started stalking. Mm -hmm. So I was on the slopes. My father was an ex-skier. So I learned how to ski and went to the Austrian ski team when I was five. And yeah, from five till 20. Were I you was... the youngest at five? No. No, no, no. We all kind of the same, you know, rolling off the hills and try to, you know, get down as fast as we can. And, but, you know, the slopes are right outside of the house. So that's just your setup, your normal setup. And, um, yeah. And then I skied from five till 20. I raced in Austria, um, won some important races and parallel, I was also <clears throat> developing my, what do you call it, like my design artist skills because my family is in is a fifth generation woodworking. So my great great grandfather was a sculptor and I was growing up in a shop. So I was skiing and when I got home from skiing, I started carving. So I started also very young to carve in wood. And uh, that's why, you know, I do chainsaw art. That was all kind of, it's always kind of a little bit of extreme, a little bit fun and yeah, always on the edge. Do you feel like you consider yourself an adrenaline junkie being that skiing is, I mean, you're skiing off of extremely high slopes and then yeah. you're, you're woodworking with chainsaws. It's not something that you're just slowly chiseling off the wood with. Yeah, I think it's uh, yeah a little bit of danger is definitely a uh, the, the thrill or the kick on in everything and you know try to fine tune or carve it because carving for example with chainsaws chainsaw is to me is kind of a rhythm instrument because it does the sound like one ba bum ba bum and then you if you find the rhythm then you carve but also you have one wrong move the whole thing is gone you know so that's why you have to be very precise and you know you really sharpen your skills with that kind of tool and you have to be careful so how long, I mean, how old were you when you first held a chainsaw and did your art? Eight. Eight years old. Yes. And Gu with guidance, with your parent by your side. Yes, kind of. <laughs> yes. I mean, I always was fascinated. My dad had the tools in the shops. So I was going and doing stuff. When I was 10, I carved my head with a chainsaw. I have like 16 stitches because I was doing, you know... I, so you like lifted it up and then exactly. you just, yeah. how Hurt was myself. that? Like, well, I mean, bad, how many stitches did you get? I have like uh, 16 stitches up my, my head, but it was, that was a funny thing because I, you know, my parents freaked out. Of course, we went to the hospital. I got the stitches the next day I was at school and I was kind of a funny character. And my teacher was like Andres, because it looked like I had like a hairpin, like a, a girl and playing girly. It's like, Andres, please take this off your head because this is... And I said, no, I carved myself with the chainsaw and head. said, come on, those jokes are not funny. Okay, so she, she was running after me. She wanted to tear this off me, the... The, 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 the dressing. The, exactly. Said, no, this is real. You know, she, she apologized. She was oh like, oh my, my God, this is, this is real. Yeah. So that oh was my one gosh. Of, one and and this story. is in grade school when you were... Yeah, I was 10. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So she didn't think at all that no, you She was were... just saying I was playing you know, my character. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Okay. So when you had the stitches, how long, like, was that recovery process? Did you take time off of school or did you just, no. you know, I, I went I, to school next day. Yeah. There was no, no day off. Um, I don't know how long it took. I was 10. I can't remember, uh, probably a month and it was healed. I got the stitches out. Yeah. 
So you're just like, okay, this happened. It was an accident. My art is ruined. <laughs> you know, I'm, exactly. I cut my head but, moving on. But I think even more, that's when I got really fascinated by chainsaws, you know, to work with them. Because I gonna, I want to beat that beast. Absolutely. So. Do you think, do you feel like when you go through a traumatic moment, it makes you lose your sense of, I guess, PTSD from that moment when you face your fear? Hmm. Uh, of like going back to, going back to use a chainsaw, going back to create the art, knowing that it it harmed you. It's like, you know, I'm facing my fear. I'm not scared of this anymore because it was just an accident. I'm going to go back in and I'm going to face the beast. Oh, absolutely. Uh, always. If I had an accident on skiing or with anything, I want to go out immediately and beat that beast. Do you so, feel like that's a clarity in your yeah, mind when, it, sure. when you do yeah. that? Yeah, 100%. I feel like that's, it's such a hard thing to face fear, but then I, I feel like men have an easier time with facing fear than women. Like for me, if, if I'm facing fear, I'm not, or, or if something scares me and I know it's done something to me, I would be scared to go back mm. as opposed to like, all right, I'm going to face this and use it as motivation to make me a better I think artists. Yes, I think if you if you let m pass more time, then it's harder. If you go faster, it's easier. I think you mm -hmm. know. Don't wait too long. Just go back because like, you, then you're overthinking. Yeah, you just want to go. I'm more more scared of like getting hit, uh, you know beat by a shark. That's my fear. In the fear. water. You know, yeah, it's like, In the, we like, got a lot of know. shark fears. No, today. I, no, no, no. Because <laughs> that, that was really interesting. It's so funny because I love swimming, but and I go in the ocean. I'm just you know maybe the do you scuba dive? No. Oh, it's so much fun. I feel like yeah. I feel like snorkeling is is not even getting to the bottom part of a tiered cake. You know, like okay. I feel like snorkeling <laughs> is just like touching a piece of the yeah. icing on the cake. Yeah. When you're scuba diving, I feel like you're at the bottom layer of the yeah. cake and you're enjoying the cake. Yeah. You know, it's just, it. there's so much more ocean that you can see when you scuba dive as opposed to just snorkel and stay on the surface. And you're the best food out there. <laughs> oh my gosh. You know what? It's, it's crazy because um, my brother's vegan and I always feel so bad eating protein around him. And I used to be pescatarian for a while. And it's, it's just so hard. I don't really, re I rarely eat red meat. But um, when I started scuba diving, it was, mm. it kind of made me not want to eat fish, you know, because you're just like, this yeah, is so beautiful. beautiful. And you don't want to damage the earth and you don't want to affect, you know, the ocean life. And it, it's just, it's a, I felt like Ariel. I thought when I scuba dived the first time that I was going to like hold my spouse's hand and I was going to be scared i was like i was gone yeah i was mer i was a mermaid, mermaid. Yeah. Yeah, mermaid yeah it was different and i'm sure when you got on the slopes for the first time was it like an adrenaline rush of like this is where i need to be this is what i love see that's the thing i was two when i started i can't really remember when i started skiing i just know that we, we you know it's like when you were in a, a baby in on the I don't know. It's. I think I compare can compare it with surfing when mm -hmm. you grow up uh, as a young child and you start surfing. It's just when you're a child, you are so. I don't know. Did you, you try so, snowboarding before yeah. skiing or, or? No, snowboarding came way way later. I was like very competitive at that time when I was 16 when, when snowboarding kicked in and all my friends, which sucked at skiing, they switched to snowboarding because it's. Snowboarding is way easier. Yes, I was going to gonna say, I can snowboard, to, I just can't ski. To get really on to that level, I mean, and no, that was then the whole competition, you know, between I was the uncool guy because you were a skier still, and then all the other kids, the cool kids were, were snowboarding. Was it easier uh, for you to transition to snowboarding? I mean, I snowboarded and, you know, it takes you, I don't know, two days and you snowboard and it's, that's, that's it. I mean, I can if I want, but I don't want to. So you, you're, you're a skier. Yeah. I feel like usually there's, you're either skiing or you're snowboarding. And I, yeah. when I put on skis for the first time, it was so hard for me to like move because it was so long. 
how, I mean, you started at such a young age, yeah. so it's kind of like you already knew by the time you had yeah. knowledge to know you were able to do it. So it's different. I When I first skied, I was probably, I don't know, maybe like 17. Okay. And I was like, how am I going to move these long sticks of feet <laughs> that's attached to my foot? Which I, I, it, the and hip, they said, yeah. yeah, and then there's shorter ones for the professionals mm -hmm. that look easier, but they're so much harder. Why is that? Why is the shorter ones harder to use when they're shorter as opposed to the longer ones? Uh, the longer ones, I mean, I don't know what in which era. There was a huge switch of... Uh, the in 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 the skiing when this when the carving skis got introduced before it was really awful because you had just this bomb fritz you right. know like the french Super, fries yeah and the long ones so you just just you know going like that and it was like no fun carving made the whole change because that's more like the feeling what you have when you when you when you carve also like the snowboards so the shorter skis, okay, they have a, a smaller ratio to turn and they bite a little more so that mm. it's harder than, and the longer ones, you just more, you, you, you don't really carve, you just glide, glide, you know, that's, I can only imagine that's what you were experiencing. And I think if you start skiing with a later, later on, it is harder to learn from scratch because you have, you're so, you're so occupied with all this what ifs and and you know it's it's hard you have the wrong posture because you always lean back when you have fear that's the worst thing when you ski because then you speed up you just go you have to lean forward find your balance slow you down. exactly so yeah um how was competing how was that best, training like competing for competitions when you're skiing like how is the process how long was training for a competition um the cool, I think the cool thing about skiing was we were like a whole gang in the same, you know, in the age group and then you compete national wide. And this is a group. It's all, it's like in any sport and we motivate and tear us, tear each other apart through every race. And that's, it's, it's a very, um, psycho psychological game because you know, you get up on the, on the hill at the start and it's like, oh my God, I feel so good today. And my skis, oh my, my technician, he did a great job. They're so fucking fast. The other guy's like, what the fuck, what, 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 what? I check. So I did a lot of mental stuff before they, to get someone uncomfortable. And then that pushed me very hard because I had to deliver. Absolutely. So, you know, and I always needed that, that, and we were like, you know, giving each other those kind of you know trigger moment yes right and then you have to pull it off or you you fall or you 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 don't make it till the end but at least it's all or nothing have you ever watched the movie um molly's game, molly's on, game. It, it's on netflix um it's this story about she's a world-class skier and she hmm. bumped into a like piece of tree tree like nub or something in in the snow and she like flipped and had a terrible accident and then she was very very smart and then got into running poker tournaments molly's game was it recent no it's a, a little bit older but you should watch it it's a really good movie she's no, like a professional I, I, no. skier yeah i have to watch it and and yeah. then she turns into like uh, um mm. running these extremely expensive poker games and she's making okay. all this money and then she gets arrested because <laughs> she okay. does it illegally <laughs> but she doesn't take tips so okay. it's a whole situation and she gets like a really good lawyer and thank you so much I have to yeah watch it's it. a great movie yeah. let me know cool. how you like it all this game yeah it's really really cool. good so did you ever think outside of skiing you're gonna be an entrepreneur you thought like you know skiing is live how did the transition happen no it, for my i mean i'm um, I have to say I'm, I'm blessed with a lot of talents, which is a blessing and a curse. You know, I have my art direction from, I mean, I have a lot of, I mean, I can, you know, I, I during the time I was skiing, I was also going to a music instrument luthier school. I have a master wow. degree in instruments. I made violins. So I'm, I have the, the, f the skill sets to make, to, to craft things from my family side. 
So my dis my I think I was kind of a little bit of a beat up fan in my growing up. I did everything. What did you like the most? All of it. There wasn't so was something it, that you had in your dartboard that was more than the other skiing, no, more than crafting, I loved, more than. I love this the, the sports. I always loved. I love. I think and sport or the competitive skiing made me also a, a good and and emperor entrepreneur mm -hmm. because to because I I was competitive. I wanted to always compete with the top. I think that's what sport did to me to help me in my career. Um, <clears throat> to always push the limits, but I always love the arts. I love the designs. I love the the music. So I I was like, which direction should I really take? Because you can really succeed in one direction, or or, let, or do it in in in, in sections. Right. To this first, then the next, the next, and do it in times where it works. Because sport was important for me in an early age. Because you can't do it only till a certain age. So I stopped when I was twenty. Because I couldn't be a downhill skier, like that's what I really wanted, a super fast one. I was too short and not heavy enough, so I can't do that. I could never, mm -hmm. I don't have a fighting chance. It's like I'm not a heavy weight mm -hmm. boxer, you know, just from my physics, so I can't do that. So I was like, okay, I think this is the time to stop with the skiing. But the funny part, later on, I created the most luxurious ski in the world through my craftsman skills and I had a collaboration with Rolls Royce. So making those skis is the partnership with Rolls Royce and it's still still there, you know. Wow. And so it's, it, it, I don't know, it's all working kind of together. Together, right. But they're all important in the same way. But what would I say what I am these days? I'm a, I love design and, and art, you know. That's where I'm most at home. Do you yeah. like art as far as craftsmanship more so than like chainsaw art molding? Or is it more like mechanical um, craftsmanship when it comes to um, creating your craft? Well, there is there. If you do design like I do, you know, I do interior design, I do fashion luck design to hold it. You have, you have rules and regulations. You can only go that far out of the box. You know, I can make a, I don't know, a t-shirt or a, a jacket. So it still has to be a jacket, right? Right. If I carve, there are no boundaries, whatever it is, whatever that object I decide to make that. So that's, that's the, the, the pure fantasy. That's when you can get Crazy. Creative, creative. So, really do you creative. like do you like where you have kind of a more disciplined setting as opposed to like an open minded opportunity? I love one hundred percent discipline setting. We have to be completely in certain guidelines, and I want to exceed. You know, like or I want to I want to be super perfect on that, and then I want that. You know, this just depends on your mood of the day. Not mood of the day because you know I have a company to run, I have two companies to run, and then now the art is my escape. Yeah. So it's like I'm focusing on yeah. work when craftsmanship, yeah. but hobby when hobby comes yeah. to play, I can be open minded. But it's same with like skiing. You have to train. You yeah. have to prepare you have to your have body that discipline. exactly to even be able to compete. Yeah. Speaking of discipline, you met your spouse during COVID. Yeah. Tell me about your love story and how did you, <laughs> I guess, stay, how did you guys meet? Well, we met actually in Los Angeles. During COVID? No, before COVID. Before, right before it happened? Yes, no, a couple of years before we met and we had really hit it off, but she was actually, um, she was, she was in a relationship. And very serious. And I was I backed off, right? But she kept my contact. And I was two years later, I was in Italy on the beach, south somewhere. I get a message from her. She said, Hey, how are you doing? I said, I'm great. I'm in Italy. So she slid in your DMs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then, then I, I wrote her back. She said, Oh, wow, Italy sounds great. I said, Yeah, you should come with your 
boyfriend or husband. I really suppose like that. This is two years later, so you think yeah. that they're moving they were, forward yeah, in exactly. the relationship, yeah. right? She said, no more boyfriend. I said, oh, you could still come, you know? And then we were in contact and <clears throat> right in February, before the pandemic, in Italy already started. On Valentine's Day, I flew her out to Italy for the first time. So, and she, it took me a half a year to convince her, you know, like, I don't know if I should go and see the guy in Italy. And then... That I've never hung out with. Exactly. Right. We, we were, yeah. And then, yeah, she made it. And it was very romantic. I flew her to Rome, Verona, you know, the city of love. And she came, we stayed there. And then we did the whole tour from the north to Florence, to Rome, to Napoli, to Naples. Oh, that's and so then, romantic. It was really cool. And then... It, the cases went up, like the first cases, because it started in Italy. And then like, oh, what is this? I said, listen, let's just go back to Austria, to my hometown, because we are safe there. It's a little village right. in the Alps. And she's you know? never been to Austria, I'm no, sure. No, At midnight, we were, we, we knocked at my mom's, at my parents' house in a door and, and she, her mom was like, oh, oh what are you doing here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and who is this? <laughs> exactly. So we stayed there and then. How <clears> long <throat> did you know her before she went, you both went to your mom's house? A during week. The a week. Yeah. So she's meeting your mom <laughs> after a week. Have you guys what? had this amazing love journey through Italy? <laughs> yeah. But, but wait, but, you know, we didn't know. I said the most safest place because she was scared. And I mean, I didn't know what How this thing is. How far is Austria from Italy? From Napoli, I was all the way in the south. That's like a 12 hour drive, like really all the way up. Oh, wow. So, so we drove the whole day. That's why we arrived at midnight. It's like, okay, we don't stop anywhere. If this whole COVID thing, whatever that is. You didn't think like, what if I don't like this woman? What if it's not going to work? Like, what if, how long is this pandemic going to I still want to have someone safe, right? Right, of course. Because, of course. You know, so you were more focused on the safety. You wasn't like, yeah, okay, this could go she left was like freaking out as well. You know, she was, right. she was in a different country and then this whole thing starts. And then we were in Austria. But then I said, my birthday is by the end of the month. So we fly all the way south to Italy because that's where I have a lot of friends and it's beautiful. It's gorgeous. And we did that. And then... How long were you with your mother? A uh, week or so. How was that experience for her? Oh, my mom was cool. She was... She, she was loved like, it. Hey, of course. It's like, hey, of course. Because I don't bring girls home if I'm not that serious you know what i mean so Never when your that. mom asked like how long have you guys known each other so I'm, I'm sure she was said, like oh no since three years you know we just never you know i was of course a little right. bit you know not saying hey i know her since a week right. we are, of no. course yeah oh no nice you know she's, yeah. my mom is a very mm, very it's a wonderful woman no but then we flew to Italy, to south of italy the pandemic was kind of, I mean, it started the cases in the north of Italy. Said, no, I want to celebrate my birthday. And hers was two weeks after mine. So oh, wow. we were very close. We we're both spices. So then I rented a house in Puglia on the south part where you can see Greece. It's like the, Car the, the Caribbeans of Italy, you know. And it's a beautiful house surrounded with olive trees and we came there on the 11th of March and her birthday was the next day. And boom, next day was lockdown, complete. So we were at that house. I called that landlord, said, hey, what should we do? I mean, we, he said, ah, you know, Italians. Ah, don't worry, you know, all good, you know. No one thought Just, it was going to be no, a pandemic. We were in this house for three months, the whole pandemic, pandemic, me and her, like, our honeymoon or like uh, right. that was our pre-rehearsal for marriage. Right. It was the best time. I mean, we are in the most beautiful, like a private island and being there. You and, know? and after those three months, you were like, this is my wife. This is oh yeah, we are who I'm going to marry. Absolutely. So you guys got married right after those three months or how, how no, was that process no, after? After the three months, Christine didn't know. We, we didn't know what she did what we should do because she was only allowed to stay, you know, legally three months right. as a tourist, right? But like, it's the, then we called and they said, well, it's the pandemic. We don't know. You, you can't you, travel. You, 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 you can't travel. But of course, if you're from the US, the US allows you to go back. After th three months, she's like, I think I, I, I don't want to do anything illegal. I, I, I want to go back, you know? So sure. So 
she flew back and then um she was three months in the u.s and then she came back to italy to see me i mean no we were basically that that was it the story was written and that's amazing we got married like uh, october l last year no no the year before, 22 so you guys had years before you actually got married yes but after during the pandemic after the pandemic but last year on may 7th we married in verona oh in italy yes oh that's beautiful, beautiful. Wedding. yes it was oh, amazing I, I can imagine yeah no, that's so are, romantic no she's it's she's um, she's amazing and what we, about kids yeah that's the that's, that's the, the plan that's the plan we're working on it how yeah. many do you guys want well let's start with one <laughs> you know, for for sure two you know it's always that's, yeah that's boy and a girl ideally twins yeah oh yeah triplets <laughs> but i mean definitely two, two one is sure. just i don't want a single we, yeah i, I feel like from, you need a, a, a sibling to yeah. play with have fun with i have three brothers so it was that's how i grew up and i was number three and then i have a, a little one it's so important Absolutely. this whole you grow up different as a single child is kind of you know it's lonely lonely and spoiled and this is just the only, you know you, you have to have this dynamic of exactly. having to interact I with another so. child yeah. absolutely i agree yeah, yeah i agree do you have kids we have too many kids <laughs> too many okay. too many kids we have too many kids i birthed naturally two kids and okay. in total we have eight kids holy wow so that's why i was like twins yeah. triplets catch you're, up you have a whole soccer game a team. literally yeah, with, yeah. Subs, with substitutes <laughs> yeah so for everyone that comes on we play this game of would you rather i'm gonna play with you too okay rules of the game you can't remix so you can't change the question to make it your own question you mm. have to answer and you can explain what your answer is huh ready i hope i'm smart enough okay we're gonna do three cards each okay okay um uh, you could pick cards as well too oh, okay so i ask you and you ask me yes okay got it i'm gonna start with the easy one. Oh, there are the, the questions All right. Okay. You want to go first or you want me to go first? You, yeah, I do. I start. Okay. okay, go ahead. Would you rather... What is that? P? P shards of glass. P shards of glass? Yeah. P shards of glass. What is that? Like like pieces of glass? Ah, like pee. shards okay. yeah, of glass. Mm -hmm. So I, P shards of glass or... Or... Cry, ah, cry shards of glass. Oh. Uh, cry shards. I okay. would rather. I would rather cry shards of glass <laughs> only for the simple fact that I feel like I cry less than I pee. So I wouldn't be crying shards of glass so much. I feel like peeing, you pee every day. So yeah. I'm like, I feel, I would think, I don't know, I've never peed shards of glass. So that, that must be painful. I would think it would be painful yeah. either way. So I would want to go with the option that I would have to do less. Yeah. Then I would try, just try not to cry. Fingers crossed. Would you rather have 21 hours in a day mm -hmm. or have 25 hours in a day, but one hour must be spent watching airplane safety instruction videos 21 hours a day agreed <laughs> yeah. i feel like safety What's instruction up? videos are so boring the... okay would you rather be locked in a room that is constantly dark for a week or a room that is constantly bright for a week give me the brightness oh. i don't like darkness i don't yes, want anything exactly. to do with dark negative exactly. positive energy Love all the way it. yeah <laughs> all right would you rather be caught having sex by a cop or by your in-laws cop <laughs> agree <laughs> In laws is just like that's embarrassing. <laughs> so, sorry, mom. Sorry, dad. <laughs> <laughs> Would you rather be in bed in a bad relationship for the rest of your life, or 
be forever alone with no partner for the rest of your life? Oh, a bad relationship or alone? That, I mean, a bad relationship. I feel like you would, you might as well be better off alone. But then alone for the rest of your life? Oh, I guess a bad relationship. At least you're with someone. <laughs> I think, yeah. But it, it's, it's such an interesting one because I would think I would never be alone. I wouldn't want to be alone <laughs> for the rest of my no. life. That's not living. No. Exactly. You know, I, at least a kid if I don't have a, a spouse, <laughs> like something, yeah. you know, someone, a dog, something. Right. Yeah, I, I yeah. would rather be in a bad relationship. <laughs> okay, last but not least, would you rather be a sex slave or a virgin for life? <laughs> a sex slave. <laughs> a sex slave. <laughs> Agreed. Sorry. Agreed. <laughs> Agreed. I yeah. agree with you. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, but actually, if I would be a virgin, no, I'm, that's, it's not just not for the record, but, you know, if I would be a virgin, I wouldn't know what my answer would be. You know if what? I would be a virgin. That is true. But I feel like, too, mm. if, if we take the angel side of things, yeah. right, you can still be a virgin and get pleasure in other ways. You're just not getting pleasure with penetration exactly. with a person. Yeah. Is that how virginity works, that's, right? That's why my answer, if you know how great sex can be, then you, your answer will be the other one. Agreed. You know? yeah. Agreed. If you're having good sex. If you have, yeah. <laughs> Happens once in a while. <laughs> Tell everybody where they can find you, what you have going on, and all that good stuff. Ah, where can they find me? I mean, I we have a, a new project. It's called filorossostudio.com. We make... Um, products out of um we make sustainable products out of repurposed firehose and we create all kinds of beautiful things so that's where you can find us so filorosostudio.com check us out make sure you guys check out andreas at am i saying it right filoroso studios.com and tune into all the things that they are crafting and that is it for telly talks Thank you so much.